You're listening to The Lovish Podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Sita Hood, vision architect and licensed therapist. Each week, I'm going to help you to develop the belief and strategy necessary to make an immediate impact on the world by deep diving into topics like mental wellness, faith, relationships, and you guessed it, love. I should mention before we hop into the show, this is not a substitute for a relationship with a licensed therapist. You ready? Let's get it. Welcome back for another episode of the Lovish Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Sita Hood, vision architect and licensed therapist. This week in my mug, I am drinking the Nespresso Altissimo Pod as an espresso shot for a base for an iced caramel latte because it's been really, really hot here in Illinois lately. So I've been drinking iced coffee, but I just like iced coffee in general. Physically, my body is kind of tight if we being real, you know, because I'm about halfway through the 40 hard challenge. That's really challenging my body. You know, it's, it's doing what it's designed to do. Okay. <laughs> But mentally, I'm feeling well uh, because I have been pretty well rested thanks to this memory foam pillow for side sleepers. Like, come on, why y'all ain't put me on game before? The pillow has been helping me to get a good night's sleep. And as a result of that, I am feeling pretty clear mentally. What is in your mug? Let me know down below. How are you doing? Or if you're listening to this episode, tag me over on my Instagram page. So let me ask you, have you seen that movie, The Teenage Kraken on Netflix? Okay, well, let me just give you a little bit of tea without spoiling too much of the show. Um, It is about a teenage girl who enters a new phase of life. And much like we probably were at that age, she's terrified. (laughs) She discovers new things about herself that she never knew that she could do. And she's afraid to talk to her mom and tell her mom what's going on. Again, this is sounding all too real (laughs) because she thinks that her mother doesn't understand her. In typical teenage fashion, she tries to do stuff on her own and she makes a huge mess. She mistakenly thinks that her mother doesn't want her to use her gifts and her power. When in reality, her mom wants her to use her gifts and her power, but she wants her to do it with a certain level of wisdom. Sounded like anybody's childhood. (laughs) Okay, because I know, again, I can relate, okay? Now, fast forward to my adult life, and I want, and I think you'll agree with me on this, I want my daughter to know I'm always in her corner, even when we disagree. Um, And there's some things that take place in the movie where it happened because the daughter didn't know that the mom was in her corner, where the mom's old trauma was interfering with her communication levels with her daughter and how her relationship was flowing with her daughter. So before we get into today's topic, I want to be really, really clear in this episode. This is not an episode against men. We are not bashing men. We are not saying that we do not need men, etc. I believe exactly what the Bible says about humans in general. We all have value and God created us for a particular reason, each and every one of us. So God created men and women to actually complement one another instead of being pitted against each other in competition the way society wants us to be. Well, men don't do this. Well, women don't do that. Well, how about this? How about that? And he, you know, like, no. Now, with that being said, I also believe that there are way too many women under constraints that God never intended for us to be underneath. and. I think that happens for a lot of different reasons. There's religious abuse. There is a lack of full context around what the Bible actually means and how we're supposed to live that out. There are people that may have abused a woman as a child, of course, and then this plays out in how her interactions happen in the world. But the list literally goes on and on and on. And let me just tell you, if you can't tell by now, 
Dr. Sita is a girl's girl, okay? So I am rooting for all of us to have a full understanding of who God says we are and why we matter, specifically as women, okay? Okay. And that starts with some of the stories that you yourself believed growing up as a little girl and how we're raising our daughters as we heal from our own traumatic experiences. Let's talk about who you are as a mom and why we need you to raise a fearless woman. Hey, hey, aren't you tired of running around like a chicken with your head cut off? How many times have you promised to do better with your wellness routines only to let life get on top of you again? I want to invite you to pause and pour by downloading my app, The Lavish Haven, your sanctuary for cultivating daily wellness. It's completely free to use. You'll start with our pause and pour quiz and then access our signature daily and weekly wellness trackers, mood playlists, elevated emotions collections, scripture-based guided audios, and so much more. Hit the link below to start today. So much of how you present to the world now was influenced by your childhood. All of those childhood experiences make up who you are. If you grew up like me, then you probably had a lot of experiences where society tried to silence you or make you believe that you could only grow up one way. This is your lane. You have to stay over here because this is what society says you should do, period. That might be how you grew up. Meaning, if you were poor, you had to stay poor. If you're black, you have to accept that you are just not going to have the same opportunities as your counterparts, and therefore you shouldn't even try. Yeah. If you are a woman in the church, then you shouldn't have room to use your voice and so many other things just like this. So many incidents where our voice was stolen and we were told that we should be quiet. And then you wonder why in your adult life, you're so nervous to speak up. You struggle with imposter syndrome. You question yourself at every turn. Well, the truth is you were taught that your opinions and your voice weren't things that you should trust. You were taught that you are not trustworthy, that the thoughts that God gave you are not trustworthy. But here is the truth of the matter. Who you really are is a powerful woman. You're a leader. You're ambitious and kind. You're a generational curse breaker. You are an influential and intentional part of God's master game plan. You are a unique strategy from heaven. So of course you are supposed to be quiet. Of course, no one wants you to use your voice. And this is exactly why we need you to raise a fearless daughter, a fearless woman, because if she never learns the power of her voice, then a whole lot of things in this world don't change because she's a unique strategy. Just like you are, she is too. And there's a whole lot that doesn't change if she never learns the power of her voice. And the world needs this change. A heavenly strategy doesn't get executed if your daughter doesn't learn to fearlessly embrace who God made her to be. That's it. That's the mission. That's part of your assignment. Legacy. Legacy, legacy, legacy. I can't say it enough. Your daughter doesn't need perfection. There is no perfect way to raise a fearless daughter because everybody's experiences are different. Your experiences are different and the world that she's growing up in now is extremely different from the world that you and I grew up in. And so perfection is impossible because culture, society, life, the world is always evolving. Furthermore, life happens and we have to embrace all the parts of our story, even the unplanned parts, even the parts of our life that we never pictured. You know, you have this visual of what you wanted your life to look like. And maybe if you look around now, life doesn't look like that. In fact, it looks completely opposite of what you wanted. Even in that, you have to embrace where you are. For example, if you are a divorced mom 
Don't let that stop you from pouring into and nurturing the relationship with your daughter. You can still teach her the same values on marriage that you intended to teach her. You just also have to teach her the real parts of what could happen in a relationship, in a marriage. If you've had trouble and moved around more often than you like, and that's impacted your relationship or even how your daughter interacts with the world, talk to her about it. It's likely that she has a lot of really, really big feelings because a lot of times we forget that kids and even tweens and teens or kids and young adults, they are just little people, but they're still people who have thoughts, feelings, opinions, and they want people to talk to them. They want to be included. They want to be loved on. They want to be cared for. They want a safe space. And so perfection does not exist. And it's okay because she doesn't need someone who's perfect. She needs to actually observe you as you bounce back from failure so that she learns how to do it in her adult life. She needs to see you be sad for a little bit so that she learns how to manage her emotions and how to sit in it and come out of it with a positive attitude. And I'm not saying that you should be getting caught up in making your child responsible for your emotions or becoming what therapists like to call a parentified child, which basically means a child that's on the same level as a parent. But what I am saying is, Your daughter needs to see the human side of her mother. This is so important, so vital, because I think the reason why a lot of us struggle with this idea of perfection is because we never saw our mom say, oh, this was a hard day. Oh man, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't navigate through this right, but I'm gonna be okay. I just need a couple minutes by myself, baby. It's okay. Or on the flip side of that, you learned in a very toxic manner. Sorry, toxic is the only way to describe it because that's what it is to be responsible for your parents' emotions. And I'm not even saying that if you were a parentified child that your parent is bad, just it is very toxic to place your child in the same or on the same level as yourself. That is harmful. And there's years of therapy involved with undoing that cycle. But some people only learn to do that because that's what was done to them. And so there are a lot of other reasons we're not getting into shame as we typically stay away from shame over here. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this episode as well. But it's important to address that that is toxic. And I'm not saying getting caught up in that. I'm saying letting your child see humanness, letting your child see you fail, letting them see you be excited, letting them see what it feels like for you to actually experience life. That's why it's important for you to do your own mental work and heal. It's important for you to ask yourself questions like, How does your trauma show up in this relationship? What are your triggers? Do those triggers tend to come from your daughter? How does that impact your interactions with your daughter? Maybe your husband does something that drives you up the wall and you see those same character traits in your daughter. And if that's the case, I would ask you, what is your response like then? The important thing to remember is that she's your daughter. And with her being your daughter, she is your responsibility and she's still able to be influenced by you. So if you see behaviors that you don't like, You simply correct them from a place of love. And this may require you stepping away for a second so that you don't get frustrated or that frustration doesn't come out on her. But the important thing to remember is that you're her mom and you can still very much so influence how she shows up in the world. And you have to just learn to accept you are going to make mistakes, okay? You've got to accept that at some point, Your kids are going to come back and tell you something that you might have done that made them feel away. And when they do, give them space to talk about it, okay? Give them space to talk about it, acknowledge it, validate their feelings, and acknowledgement and validation do not mean agreement. I have to say, obviously as a mother, I am honestly terrified of the day that my kids come back and talk to me and tell me the things that I did. But it it's inevitable. It's a part of life because, again, 
parents aren't perfect. So there's always going to be something that was done with positive intention that didn't go over so well with your child because you missed the mark or you didn't understand. And you just have to brace yourself for that now. Understand now that that's going to happen. It's not something that you can avoid. And do your best to have that conversation in love with your child. But this is another reason why I do my best to parent in love. Because if you are a parent who, at the very least, listens to your child, has open lines of communication with your child, then when they do come back with that feedback, they will reflect that same sensitivity and compassion to you as they are expressing themselves. Now, if you tend to just be short, cut them off, don't want to hear what they got to say, don't communicate, it's going to come back to you in a very harsh way. But if you're teaching your children to be compassionate for other people, to be mindful of other people's feelings, to express themselves in a healthy way, to establish relationships that are in alignment with what God has for their life, they will come back to you with that same kindness, with that same empathy, with that same gentleness, even in a, hey, mom, this really hurt me. Even in that, they will love on you. They will give you feedback and love if that's what you taught them to do. I didn't say gentle parent, okay? I, I, I didn't say gentle parent, okay? And it's not that I'm against gentle parenting, but I think this concept of gentle parenting has gone way too far. There are some people that think gentle parenting is not holding kids accountable or responsible for anything that they do. And that is not what I'm saying in the least bit. Kids should most certainly be responsible for the things they do. Because guess what? When you are an adult, police ain't going to gentle police you. They ain't going to do that. The judge is not going to gentle sentence you, you know, gently fine you. They're not going to do those things. Your boss is not going to gentle talk you sometimes, right? So your your child has to be ready for hard conversations, for firm parenting and firm words from authority or stern warnings from authority. They have to be able to take all of that. And so gentle parenting, I get the concept in general, the thought process behind it, but I, I would say that you can find me somewhere in the middle of very hard, borderline child abuse, no, we're not doing that, and gentle parenting. Those are two opposite ends of the spectrum. So I parent right here in the middle. Our kids have a voice and we value their voice. We respect them. But at the same time, we mama and daddy, okay? And so you have autonomy in a certain amount of areas of your life. But at the end of the day, our word is our word. And again, that's teaching the balance there. We respect you. We love you. We care for you. But at the end of the day, boo-boo kitty, yeah, we are mama and daddy. Okay. So we are the authority figures that set the boundary. And you need those boundaries so that you don't go wilding out and doing the most. So finding balance here is super important. And something that can help you to stay balanced is being future oriented. And staying future oriented or outcome oriented while balancing being present is really hard. But again, necessary. So staying future oriented means I'm always making decisions that enhance or pour into her future. How will the habits that she's settling into today matter for her future? But not being so future focused or caught up in building her future that you forget to be present with her today. So what do I mean by that? I mean, don't forget to show up for her now. Because yeah, you could be working a whole lot of extra hours so you can stash money for her when she's in college or money when she leaves the house or building up or setting her up with a better future in whatever capacity. But you can't forget about the day-to-day -day things and the day-to-day -day ways that she really needs you. So just really being mindful of how we show up today while also being mindful of how our actions today impact her in the future. 
Okay, so we have to talk about the hard parts because the reality is that there are some mothers and daughters who are not in a good space right now. And as a mama, I would imagine that you didn't really picture reaching this place with your daughter. And if that's you today, then I want you to know that life happens and you can still heal. You can still fix your relationship with your daughter. This next portion, this next part we're going to talk about might be hard to hear, but I need you to understand that it comes from a place of love when I share it. Because when I became a therapist, I made a personal vow not to lie to people. Lying to people ruins their lives, okay? Like teaching people stuff or enabling them, pity patting stuff around them, does not help them grow and it does not help them become the person that they were born to become. So I vowed never to do that, even if the thing that I have to say is very hard to hear. So again, know that if this part of the podcast is for you, it's coming from a place of love and there's still hope for you. It takes a lot to heal the relationship, but it's possible. It takes a lot of releasing your stubbornness and focusing on your daughter's needs. Yes, your needs do matter, but here's the truth and here's the hard part. You signed up to be her parent. She didn't ask you to be birthed. She didn't say, hey, could you get pregnant with me? No, you got pregnant with her and you chose to give birth to her. And when relationships reach a tumultuous point, like sometimes they do, sometimes moms want to know why their daughter is struggling with being understanding about mom's needs, about mom's emotions, about mom's heart. And it's likely because you haven't heard her needs, her thoughts, her desires, her heart yet. Again, kids model what they see. So they will have a hard time expressing how they're feeling, expressing what's going on with them internally and sharing their heart. They'll try to do it in their own way. But if there hasn't been a space that's been created for them, then it comes out in other ways, lashing out, being verbally aggressive, and sometimes even unfortunately physically aggressive. And I am not an advocate for that, not, not disrespect, not verbally aggressive, not physically aggressive. I do not advocate for that. I'm not here for that. However, you also have to acknowledge that there was a part you played in how the relationship got here. And if you're still listening to this episode, then I'm going to go ahead and say that you are likely committed to changing this thing. The hard truth is... Again, if your relationship is not in a good space with your daughter, you've got to go back and look at the things that you contributed to the relationship to make it like this and not from a place of shame, just for us to take an accurate assessment of what happened. Where did the ball drop? Where did the relationship start to falter between you two? What happened? What happened and where do you need to take ownership for parts that happened? It's often a domino effect. It's often like one or two things that have happened and then the pieces just start to unravel from there. And before you know it, you're in this chaotic space in the relationship that you never intended to be. I've been a therapist for over 10 years and I specialize in crisis and trauma. And people look at me like I'm an alien when I tell them that the best way to get what you want is by surrendering, 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 surrendering. And again, I did not say gentle parenting, but but the next question that usually follows after that is, are you saying she get everything she want? What I'm just supposed to let her do X, Y, Z? I'm just supposed to let her talk to me like that? No, 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 no. That is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is you are going to have to learn to compromise. She is a young adult. And I'm saying this because I'm imagining that this is your teenage daughter. <laughs> but if it's not... If it's not your teenage daughter and she's eight or nine or 10 or however old she is, you have to give her a sense of autonomy. You're going to have to leave room for her autonomy. I can remember when my daughter was probably about five and I had such a struggle 
at that point getting out of the door on time with her because she always went through this hissy fit about what she wanted to wear. And so I finally said, okay, I'm going to pick out three outfits that I approve already. I'm going to set those in front of her and I'm going to let her decide what to wear from those three outfits. That instantly cut out our friction in the morning, our conflict in the morning. Why? Because she had autonomy over what she was able to wear. And I, in turn, had approved, pre-approved what she could wear. So there was a space or boundaries that was carved out appropriately that I was okay with for her. And she still got to choose within that boundary. So you are going to have to teach your daughter to effectively manage all of that passion inside of her, all of that networking, all of the things that she cares about, all of the back talking extra. You have to teach her how to effectively manage that because it's just a storm that's brewing if we don't teach her how to manage her emotions. She can't grow if you never give her space to grow. If you don't give her space to make mistakes, if you don't give her space to be imperfect, if you don't give her space to experience life, she can't grow. So you've got to decide what areas you're willing to compromise in and what areas you are absolute no, 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 10 toes down on, okay? Because you have that freedom. You get to do that. Of course, I am going to recommend therapy because you have to have multiple conversations with her. You have to have a conversation probably with the therapist first yourself on how the relationship got there. And then a conversation with your daughter because your daughter probably doesn't need to know all the tiny details on how you got to where you are. But she does need some context, some conversation, some understanding of how you got to where you are. And then of course, you're gonna need therapy because you have to figure out how to move forward and how to heal the relationship. And if you are currently in the thick of a rough patch, hang in there, hang in there. Know that there's still hope for your relationship, but it's gonna require that both of you change. And nine times out of 10, the first person to change gonna have to be you, mama. It's gotta be you. The easiest way to try and get yourself to become a little bit more empathetic to your daughter is maybe to reflect on your own relationship with your mom. What was she like? Did she allow you autonomy? What did that feel like if she did? What did it feel like if she didn't? Was she extremely loose in her boundaries and in the freedom that you had? And maybe that's why you feel like you have to be so strict. Really take some time and examine your relationship with your mother and how that plays into your relationship with your daughter. It's time to talk about what I've been loving. Product recommendations, shout outs to family and friends, and overall gratitude. Let's get into it. Welcome back for another What I've Been Loving. This week, I have been loving the Peloton app. Now, I know when I say the Peloton app, most people think, oh, you have to own a Peloton. You don't have to own a Peloton. I love going to the gym. I'm a gym rat. And so I do not really necessarily see a reason for having a Peloton, at least right now in my house. But I do like to still subscribe to the Peloton app because if there's a day that I can't make it to the gym, then I can do a home workout. And I use the Peloton app for tracking my runs. And they have two memberships. One is $13 a month. The other one is $25 a month. I really, really recommend the app. Like I said, I prefer the gym, but the Peloton app is really good. And I'm gonna tell you why I prefer the gym because... I always find that I burn more calories at the gym. I promise when I be at home, I be thinking I be putting in that work, okay? But I, I be burning a good amount of calories, but it don't be like when I be at the gym. I think it's just the energy that people bring 
in the classes and the motivation from the coaches and different things like that. But they have live classes on the Peloton app. So if you want some of that same energy, you can have that. And I really love doing guided runs on the Peloton app. So that's what I've been loving this week. Uh, I am going to put a link for a 60-day guest pass for you to try out the Peloton app. I'll put that link down below in the show notes underneath this video, et cetera, et cetera. But y'all see my streak. Y'all see my streak of working out, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. If you enjoyed today's episode, share the love, share it with your mama, share it with your auntie, share it with your best friend. Then head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. Reviews help the podcast to grow. Well, that's all I have for you today. I'll see you on these social media streets. Bye.